Hi, I'm Frank Bailey, and this is That Sounds Interesting podcast, featuring interviews, discussions, short stories, and a commentary on events past and present. This episode is the first in a series of podcasts in this channel called What Happened In. It's a look back at popular culture over the last 60 years, news, politics, music, art, science and technology. For each podcast in the series, I'll be looking at what happened in each year, starting from 1960 to the present day. When I think back to 1960, I remember as a young kid, it was around that time we got our first television. It had grainy black and white images, but it brought the world into our living room and it it expanded our imaginations beyond the suburban streets of semi-detached houses in South County Dublin where I grew up. I guess you could compare that to millennials first having access to the internet in the 90s and how it opened up the world to them as it expanded. The decade from 1960 is seen as a time of change, defined by civil rights demonstrations, racial protests, anti-Vietnam War protests, and the music of Bob Dylan, The Beatles, Joni Mitchell, and Simon and Garfunkel. The assassination of President Kennedy sent a shockwave through the USA and around the world. And when Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon and announced one small step for man, one giant step for humanity, it was watched by millions on TV, and for one brief moment it felt like the world was acting as a single community. But that feeling didn't last for long. It was the era when more than 100,000 people dressed as hippies and had the summer of love in San Francisco, and a decade of sexual liberation, of experimentation with LSD, rock music, flowery shirts and wide trousers. A time when young people found their voices and protested against the government policies and actions and made themselves heard. However, that was all to come, and the actual year 1960 was more a reflection of the previous decade than a foreshadowing of the years ahead. So let's get back to 1960. It was the year that John F. Kennedy announced that he was running for president and won the election later that year in November 1960, but it was a close race against Richard Nixon, who later became president in 1969. Tensions were escalated when Cuba nationalised all American companies on the island in 1960 in reaction to the USA embargo after the Cuban Revolution in 1959. This eventually led to the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962 when Russia planned to install nuclear missiles on the island just 90 miles off the USA and the world held its breath for a brief period during the nuclear standoff between Russia and the United States. Although the Beatles dominated the 1960s decade and influenced popular music since then, they hadn't arrived on the scene in 1960 as they were only formed in that year. The top hits of the year included Elvis Presley with It's Now or Never. He also starred in two films that year, Chubby Checker with The Twist, which started a huge dance craze, Roy Orbison with Only the Lonely, and Paul Anka with Puppy Love. The epic film Ben-Hur, set in Jerusalem at the beginning of the first century, swept the Oscars, winning Best Picture and, for Charlton Heston, Best Actor. They hired 15,000 extras to cheer at the most famous scene, the chariot race. Of course, nowadays, that would be done in CGI, and a nearly four-hour-long film of that length would never be made today, unless it was a miniseries. In what was a coup for the post-war hunting of escaped Nazi officers, Adolf Eichmann, one of the major organisers of the Holocaust, was abducted in Buenos Aires by Mossad, the Israeli secret service. He was subsequently tried for war crimes and executed. When the Soviets launched the first satellite Sputnik in 1957, it sent shockwaves across the USA and started the space race between the two countries. In 1960, Russia launched the fourth Sputnik research satellite. The second satellite had carried a dog, Laika, into space. She was the first animal in space, but the fact that she had died within hours of the launch due to overheating problem was only made public in 2002. The story at the time was that she had circled the world and died six days later when the oxygen ran out. Harper Lee published her novel To Kill a Mockingbird, which deals with racial inequality and rape, 
and it was a hugely successful novel in the USA and around the world. It was Harper Lee's only novel until she published Go Set a Watchman in 2015, 55 years later. Sadly, the second book didn't have the same impact as her first book. Cassius Clay, who subsequently changed his name to Muhammad Ali, won a gold medal for boxing in the 1960 Rome Olympics. He went on to become the heavyweight champion of the world and captured the media with phrases like float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. He was by far the most successful and popular boxer of his time. It's amazing to think that the world's population in 1960 was just 3 billion and now 60 years later it's 7.8 billion. Finally, for 1960, here are some well-known people born in that year. Hugh Grant, the English actor who starred in films such as Love Actually and Four Weddings and a Funeral. Diego Maradona, the Argentine superstar footballer who died in 2020. And Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple. OK, that's it for this episode. I'll be back soon with a new podcast, so please subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. See you soon. Bye.